It's so nice to see you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I tell you what, we have an interesting topic for you guys today. Um, we're going to be talking about aliens, spiritualism, and the Sunday law. This is a very interesting topic that our culture is currently looking at and has been looking at over many, many, many years. And so we're going to look at this from a scientific and a biblical point of view. Uh, no tinfoil hats, I promise you. If you brought your tinfoil hat, just crumple it up and put it inside your pocket. But I think we need to take a logical view on this interesting topic. Amen. Our uh, speaker for today, our first speaker here in the center, we have Brother Mikey Jenny. Mikey, tell us a little bit about yourself, bro. So if you guys missed my testimony this morning, um, I was raised in the church, not the Adventist church. And as a child, I had a lot of tough questions. And one of the things was, what are aliens? What are ghosts? What are all these things? And um, Christians didn't have good answers for me. So I started going into the, the realm of the occult and things like this. And um, even as a Christian, I was, later, fast forward, I became a Christian, but I still had this concept of, well, there's aliens, there's all this vast universe, and there's all these experiences that people have had and video of UFOs and all these things. So I still didn't have the answer. And uh, I was trying to figure out how this works out with the Bible. You know, how do they go together? And um, around 2012, God really started opening my eyes about what this really is. And uh, so I have a completely different view now than what I used to. A biblical view? Biblical view. That's why. That's Amen. why my mind changed. All right. And here we have Brother Patrick Irving, uh, a member here in Lexington Seventh-day Adventist Church. Brother Patrick, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. So uh, I grew up, you know, going to church with my family, but um, never really took hold of me, I guess. So when I got into high school, I kind of left the church, um, went into the world, and I kind of got involved into the whole New Age um, section of culture, I guess I'll call it. And um, What kind of stuff did you study when you say New Age? What kind of stuff are we talking about? I studied a lot of um, meditation, you know, kind of magic, mysticism, like Any crystals. famous authors and books? Um, I was really into Alice Bailey. Um, I was really into kind of some dark authors. Now that I see them as dark, yeah. but they always present themselves as, uh, you know, a benevolent kind of author or writer. Um, and eventually I started studying the Bible and I uh, came out of the New Age and all of that stuff. So We need to have him share his testimony sometime. Hey, man, he has a wonderful testimony. Uh, uh, if you ever go into his house or his apartment, um, you're going to be amazed and creeped out at the same time. Uh, <laughs> he comes from this world, so he knows exactly what that world is all about and what it has. And he still has some of that, those things to show people what the dark arts has. And um, I tell you what, he's a really cool guy to hang around with, very intelligent person, uh, logical viewer, and a really good brother in Christ. Me. My name is Jared. I'm a Bible worker here in Lexington, Seventh-day Adventist, and um, I grew up a Catholic, and I love the Word of God. Went to a Revelation series when I was 15, and I've just been hooked on His Word. And if Satan is out there to confuse the masses, um, God needs some watchmen. Amen? He needs some people that'll speak up. Now, there's many things to be worried and concerned about in the times that we're living in. The mark of the bees, corona, and many other interesting things. Um, there's so many winds of doctrine being thrown around right now. But I believe that the topic of aliens within our church is just not something that's really discussed about or really known about. And this year specifically, we're going to be, as a culture in the U.S., we're going to be, this is going to be a topic that everyone's going to be speaking about because the U.S. military is going to be revealing to the Senate. Uh, all the news networks are talking about uh, their findings on UFOs. And uh, when it comes down to it, their findings are, is that it's not from this planet mm. along with the beings. And so we're going to be diving into this topic and seeing what the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, um, has to say about it. And before we do, <clears throat> I played you guys a little short clip from this morning. For those that weren't here to see it this morning, uh, I'm going to play you guys this news clip. Oh, wait. wait. Okay. Different one? We, we have one here. Well, slightly yeah. different. I'm going to have them play that one, then we'll go through that one. Sorry, okay. bro. Go ahead. 
In night vision video from a Navy destroyer, a mysterious flying triangle above the deck of the ship, the Pentagon confirming the images obtained by documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell were taken by Navy personnel, expected to be a part of a report on unidentified aerial phenomenon to be presented to Congress this summer. Already online, some skeptics say the images are caused by cameras trying to focus, but some of the objects go beyond just flying in the sky. One shows a spherical object dipping into the ocean, similar to an incident in Puerto Rico, where an object was tracked buzzing an airport, then flying into the water, popping back out before appearing to split into two and disappearing. Over the last several weeks, some of the nation's top former intelligence officials have been raising eyebrows. Look at that thing. It's rotating. Former CIA director R. James Woolsey said he knew of a case where a plane was paused in midair. A friend of mine was able to have his aircraft stop at 40,000 feet or so and not continue uh, uh, operating as a normal uh, aircraft. What was going on? In December, ex-CIA director John Brennan said it was arrogant to believe there are no other forms of life other than the ones on Earth. And former intelligence chief John Ratcliffe says officials have been tracking technology beyond our capabilities. We're talking about objects picked up by satellite imagery that are difficult to explain. Like another incident off the coast of California in 2004, when a fighter squadron encountered an object that seemed to defy gravity. What do you think it is? I, I honestly don't know. I don't think that we have developed that technology. I don't think we developed it on this planet. Video from that encounter and two other incidents were officially released by the Pentagon last year. Oh, now new signs that the Pentagon could declassify more sightings of what they can't explain. And guys, now here's the thing about those last three F-18 videos. I recently asked uh, the former director of uh, the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program at the Pentagon, point blank, are those the only videos that the government has? He said no, those were probably the least compelling videos. And in some videos, you see an object about 50 feet away from the cockpit. Ooh. Guys. Okay, that's crazy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say I don't believe because I don't want them to come prove me wrong. Exactly. So, right. I'm, with I'm with you. <laughs> and by the way, think about every person who thinks they've seen something oh. up in the sky. These are these are just the military confirmed ones. I don't like it. I'd wow. like to go back just like <laughs> thinking that this isn't real. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. I'd like to be happy in my ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the day in the 80s, 90s, 70s, 60s, whenever you might have been around. Uh, and only weird people believed in aliens. It only happened in like small towns in Nebraska and cornfields. Yeah. yeah, they would show uh, some redneck in his overall saying, yep, uh, I saw him fly right over. And it was really to make it look like only ignorant people believe this, you know. Yeah. But now the military, you were in the military. Does the military usually just come out and say something very crazy and act like it's real? I mean, no, we have two levels of secrecy. We have secret and then we have top secret. When I was in the military, I only knew secret. You had to have a certain amount of clearance in order to receive top secret clearance. And so you might receive orders to go do something, but you're only going to receive it in a secret clearance. You don't know the finer details of the top secret. Yeah. So. Like I said, I've been interested in this since elementary school, didn't have the answers, wanted the answers, and along the way, kind of believed a lot of different things about this. But after I became a Christian, I uh, started hearing about this theory called the ancient astronauts theory. So uh, um, archaeologists started finding things like this. Are we not getting the picture here? Okay, so archaeologists started finding etchings and carvings that looked like, wow, this looks like a, an astronaut. So maybe a long time ago, um, you know, maybe there was technology back before the flood that is similar to ours, you know, as in the days of Noah, maybe they had spaceships and things like this. This was, this is the, um, this is the idea that's propagated to the public right now that we've been doing this stuff for a long time. And you see etchings and stuff of what people describe as as aliens, the large heads, the big eyes. So this has been going on for a long time. This isn't something that just came out in the 80s or something like that. People have been seeing this stuff. So what is it? Well, ancient aliens, uh, they've been doing this for about 12 years. Anyone ever seen ancient aliens from the History Channel or anywhere else like that? 
Okay, yeah, brother Arthur yeah. over here. All right, a couple of people. All right, Ethan's. No. Um. So, uh, go on about ancient aliens, bro. Yeah. So what's interesting is when you turn to History Channel, you expect to find credible history factual type stuff and they're saying hey uh the pyramids could have only been made by extraterrestrials there's no way we could have done it and they keep pushing this thing even to the point where they say that these ufos are in the bible and they try to explain away things that are in the bible but here's a couple more examples so the history of, channel says that the aliens are actually in the bible yeah well they try to explain away miracles in the bible as being extraterrestrial here's a couple different you know, photographs and things of etchings and ancient artwork. But here we see a picture of a cop. You know, this is a, a concept artist rendering, but a cop is looking at a UFO and doesn't it look very similar to what was going on in the, in Moses day in the wilderness. Um, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and led them the way. And by night, a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. So the History Channel is saying, whoa, yeah, we can explain all this stuff that's in the Bible. It was really aliens that Moses saw. It was aliens that led Moses through the wilderness. And this was very convincing to me, who a person who was intrigued by aliens and was now a believer and trying to put these things together. And maybe the pillar of cloud by day was actually... The, the exhaust of one of these spaceships. So it sounds like the History Channel is more confusing the masses on exactly the miracles of God. Yeah, trying to explain it away with extraterrestrial beings instead of what God did, really did. By the way, afterwards, everyone, we will be having a short Q&A. So if you'd like to hang around um, for the short Q&A after the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask. Awesome. So one thing I started thinking is how come when people see these lights in the sky, our mind automatically think, oh, it's, it's visitors from another planet. Why do we associate these flying crafts with aliens? Because it's proven that our government has tried to make these things and have made these things. Who knows how successful it's been, but this is very old. This is like World War II stuff. Did you have some? Oh, no, I was going to say, looking at the craft, uh, you know, knowing the technology that we have today of drones, that craft looks like it's being uh, propelled by a form of a thrust of a fan of some sort to be able to elevate like that. And I know that technology today is just starting to get into self-stabilizing craft that uh, can be in one position without really moving around just by using a fan. Yeah. So, you know. What we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look through at all the different things that this could possibly be, and then we're going to go to the Bible. But one thing, maybe it could be military craft that they're not telling us about. Maybe it's top secret, but that doesn't explain the stuff we just looked at, the ancient etchings, you know. But why do we um, immediately think of aliens? Maybe it has to do with all the propaganda we've been fed since television has existed. I mean, about Star Trek, Star Wars, even as far back as Laurel and Hardy, the day that the earth stood still, all of this was putting a seed in your mind. When you see this shaped object flying, it's because an alien is flying it. This is why every time we see something, we don't think, oh, it's something spiritual or, oh, it's something military. We're thinking, oh, this is an alien visitor. You got a couple of, uh, hold on, going back there, um, you got a couple of movies. I don't know about you guys, but growing up, I mean, I wasn't really raised in the church, and the time I did spend in the church in my younger years, um, I didn't have the best choice in my movie selection. And I tell you what, uh, probably at least three out of four of these movies I've seen, and uh, Starship Troopers being one of my favorite. <laughs> but if you think about this, what is the theology teaching you what is that an alien race is coming yeah. of some sort either it's going to be beneficial or it's going to be an enemy yeah that's true it, it kind of goes both ways you know you got et the lovable alien guy but a lot of these is about an alien threat that's coming now biblically thinking what are we preparing for to come to earth that's going to cause destruction see biblically thinking we shouldn't want to stop the destruction of earth because that's when christ comes only the wicked really have an agenda to stop that if you're on the right side there's nothing to worry about 
But over and over and over, and it's not just alien movies, it could be uh, Armageddon, which is a very biblical name, was about a meteor coming to Earth and they had to stop it. There's this evil threat that's coming to destroy humanity, but if we unite together, we can stop that from happening. This is all propaganda to side with Satan in this great battle. Well, and also thinking about the propaganda and uniting with other beings, you know, thinking about men in black, you know, the uh, for those that haven't seen it, don't see it. <laughs> but in regards to the storyline, uh, the human race comes upon a wreckage of a craft where they receive information and technology that they wouldn't normally have. And because of these aliens, they're able to be far more advanced than the usual human out there. So aliens helping the yeah. military and things like that. Yeah, I think kind of each movie you see of about aliens, no matter what it is, it's either coming from the standpoint that we should be fearful of these things or we should be sympathetic towards these things, like they're misunderstood yeah. by us. Um, I, and, and as we go through this, you'll see why that is. Why do we have both sides of this thing? Because I really think that it, it plays a role in biblical prophecy, why we're taught, oh, they're our friends, but they're also our enemy. Uh, I thought it was very interesting that this is being talked about in, at the United Nations. Uh, here's a speech from Reagan, September 21st, 1987. Listen to this interesting thing he said here. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? So the reason this says, is there an agenda? Because I think most of us are familiar with terms like New World Order and, you know, a big plot that, I don't know, I want to say the governments of the world are going to create a one world system, right? One world government, one world religion. How is this going to happen? Well, I think meetings like this help that out, you know, United Nations. And how are you going to get the entire world to unify on these things? Well, he said an alien threat. So when he says the whole world, we're talking about every nation, kindred, and tongue. Every so belief system. Atheists, Muslims, Hindus. How is this going to convict all of them? Good question. I think we'll find out as we go through this thing. All right. Very interesting enough, in December 20 of, last, of uh, two years ago, December 20, 2019, we got a new branch of the military service called the Space Force. Trump uh, launched this thing. I think it's interesting now that we're not just battling and on Earth with other people, but now we're trying to defend space. Um, I don't know. I, I actually question even some of the space travel and things like that, but I just think it's weird that, that this is a, a reality. So this is not a tinfoil hat conspiracy. This is something we should really look into and, and, and uh, explore here. And if you look into you know, what we just saw about Reagan... Um, and talking about an alien threat to unite the nations, mm -hmm. then uh, when when you think about the space force, it's not they're not just protecting America; they're protecting all of Earth. Right. Um, and like the movies, we need to protect Earth from some kind of threat, right? Um, so when I took this screenshot, all these news sources were saying that. Um, that there was a bill, a 5,000 page bill. You know nobody reads these things. When there's 5,000 pages, nobody's reading anything. They're just signing off. Uh, this came out when Trump was in. It's a COVID-19 relief plan. They all said that it had something in there about UFOs. I don't know what UFOs have to do with COVID or you know stimulus checks or anything, but this is from military.com. Says the Pentagon has six months to disclose what it knows about UFOs says, as part of the newly passed COVID relief legislation, lawmakers are demanding answers from the U.S. intelligence agencies and the Defense Departments on political existence of, oh, potential existence of UFOs and other identified aerial phenomena. 
So this is pretty intense. This is from military.com. This is the website when I was a soldier that I would go to for military news in general. All the soldiers uh, in the U.S. at least are going to be talking about this because they're going to be receiving reports and training on how to go about with this information that they're going to be receiving. One thing about soldiers is they're constantly training. And and uh, as a soldier, you're supposed to uh, defend uh, domestic and uh, enemies that are outside foreign. foreign. And so when you're talking about the Space Force, this new branch of the military, which at first I thought is the most hilarious thing. I was like, well, first they had the National Guard and now they have Space Force. For all my military friends, I hope you're just laughing. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I was in the Army. Um, but yeah, they actually have a general. Wow. And they're going out there and they're saying, hey, we're trying to recognize uh, threats that are coming in and also to communicate with those that are outside of our realm. Oh, they've been trying to do that for years. There's a program called SETI and they've been beaming, you know, radio waves or whatever, trying to see if they get any kind of signal from out there. So we've always been looking for life out there. And, you know, as they keep sending re remote control cars to Mars and all this stuff, I think all this is setting us up, setting the stage. Um, this is just going more in depth about that bill. And uh, it says, you know, it's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo here, but it says in plain words, the Pentagon has 180 days to turn over all information it has on UFOs. It's hard to imagine many, it's hard to imagine many other times in American history where that fact could be overshadowed by bigger news. Well, and I remember just recently, a few years ago, they had a rush to Area 51. Oh, yeah. And they said, hey, well, I mean, they didn't go into Area 51, but there's a huge, you know, I don't know, Kumbaya or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, we want to know what's inside Area 51. Everyone's asking for the answers that we all have questions to. I'm glad you brought that up because one thing I think that is going on behind the scenes is they're trying to – What's the word? Uh, they're trying to bring people to a, a place where we want the answers because before it was like, well, I don't believe it and all these things. But as they it's like they're leaking out things just enough to make it look like we're not in the know about it. So to bring us to a point where we're like, yeah, I want to know. Let us know. Um, I just want to show this. This is another news clip, but there's some interesting things being said here that. There have been double the sightings of UFO since COVID. I think that's interesting. But it starts off with two different commercials by two different companies. And it's just, it's just ironic that they throw this alien in there. It has nothing to do with the product at all. This is just pure propaganda, if you ask me. Um, Greg, are you seeing this? I am. I have never seen such a gorgeous line. So green and lush. Think about what you could think about when you're not thinking about weeds. Aliens are real, all right. There's just too much evidence. But ghosts, not so much. I mean, where's the proof? Show me the data. I think I there are a lot more sightings than have been made public. We're talking about objects that, um, frankly, um, engage in actions that are difficult to explain, that um, movements that, uh, that are hard to replicate, that we don't have the technology for. And the information is very compelling. It's, it's real. Yeah. Okay, it's real. Are they from another planet? It's, if it's not ours and it's not theirs, well, then it's, it's someone or something else. I can't wait for this report to come out. Lou, thank you very much for joining us today. Interesting stuff. Sure, my pleasure. Well, meantime, UFO sightings in New York have nearly doubled since the pandemic began, and we are getting new video from the Navy showing pyramid-shaped objects flying in the sky. Brian Yenis is live for us in Brooklyn, New York. Brian, good morning. Yeah, this night vision video purportedly shows three pyramid-shaped UFOs flying over the USS Russell off the coast of California in July of 2019. At one point, these UFOs reportedly hovered just 700 feet above the tail of the Navy destroyer, making, quote, extraordinary maneuvers. Now, Corbell says the unclassified video is part of a classified government report. These cell phone photos taken by a 
FA-18 pilot in March of 2019 show three different unidentified aircrafts off the coast of Oceania. A Department of Defense spokesperson said, quote, I can confirm that the referenced photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel. The Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force has included these incidents in their ongoing examinations. However, the Pentagon was unwilling to confirm these three photos, which Corbell says came from the USS Omaha, showing a UFO diving into the ocean and disappearing. Extraterrestrial or, or not, a bombshell UFO report is expected in June from the U.S. government. Hmm. Trace. Look forward to that. Brian Yannis, live for us in New York. Brian, thank you. All right. I think we need to rewind just a little bit, not physically, but there's a lot that went on. You know, it's, what does aliens have to do with Roundup? Uh, I can't remember the last time I mowed my lawn and thought about an alien, but I saw something interesting in the second one specifically is they compared ghost and aliens together. The ghosts, as we know, are fallen beings. Seventh-day Adventists, we've studied into ghosts. We know this to be true. They are false spirits uh, pertaining to be dead loved ones. But the person said, I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe in aliens. Yeah. I noticed that too. It's like they're planting the seed. Well, there's too much evidence for aliens, but ghosts, not so much. So we're seeing a shift in spirituality and the spiritualism because there's, you know, more and more people are, are looking towards science. Well, I'm, I'm more this and that, you know, they're, they believe more in the aliens because there's, it's more logical to think that somebody's traveling from space than a ghost. And then we don't know where they're from or whatever. Well, and if you have a God, then you would have to be accountable for your actions, and there's all that that's included. That's and right. I'd say, um, for, from the culture, the perspective of aliens is more scientific, yeah. whereas ghosts are more um, paranormal, kind of fringe. That's um, an interesting, intangible, yeah. interesting spirit of prophecy quote on that near the end here. Now, who was that gentleman that in the video that was like, yeah, this is definitely not from this world. He uh, was kind of bald with the hair in the middle. Yeah, kind of the mohawk. He is uh, a high official in the military, and he's saying if they're not ours and they're not theirs, they're from somewhere else. So this, this is not, uh, brothers and sisters, this is not a tinfoil hat topic that some you know small little uh, outlet is putting out some, some random stuff. Uh, this is what the common Joe is looking at right now. Yeah, and I think he said June is when all this information is going to come out, which is why I think it's important to talk about this now. I've been wanting this opportunity to talk about this because who knows what's about to you know come out. So the question is, are these beings even physical beings from another world? I mean, so far, that's all we've seen is these examples that maybe they could be. But we're going to look in to see if maybe they're just interdimensional beings that are actually more spiritual in nature. So this is uh, the Catholic World Report, and it's on the incident of Fatima. Maybe some of you guys are familiar with Fatima, but basically three sheep herder children saw an apparition of Mary, and a whole field got filled with hundreds, if not thousands of people who... When did that happen? It was a long time ago, a <laughs> uh, hundred years ago. Um, and here it said, on the 13th day of the month... Which I think interesting, is interesting. interesting date right there, 13th <laughs> yeah. day of the month. It's obviously going. 13, a little red flag there. Um, from May on October 1917, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to Luc Lucia, Francisco, and Jack Quinita. So do we believe that they really saw the Virgin Mary? So we know that this is a deceiving spirit, right? This isn't physical. This is a, a spiritual in nature. And just to put things into perspective for everyone, this is 1917, uh, so this is two years after the death of Ellen White. And so it seems like the delusion of the aliens, the concentration of the delusion or the beginning to tell the lie or to really get the lie going started in the early 1900s, especially here in North America. That's true. It goes on to say the irresistible flow of pilgrims increased more and more in response to the message of hope. So this being gave the message of hope that, you know, they're going by their senses. They're going for the miracles. You know, we should not judge truth by miracles. Right. Um, during the last apparition on October 13th, 1917, a crowd of 70,000 gathered at the COVID da, da area. I can't speak that. Um, 
where Our Lady had appeared to the children. She promised a great miracle that day so all would believe. As the crowds raised their eyes to heaven in prayer, they would witness the promised miracle confirming everything the children had said. They saw the sun dance. What is the shape of the sun? It's a disc. I've actually read some of these that say they saw a, a flying, a glowing disc. And it says, the day was terribly gloomy and a lead an allegory for a world immersed in war and losing its way. Everyone was soaking wet, had mud on their feet, and were chilled to the bone on, uh, on the account of the torrents of rain that had been falling throughout the night. And right up until noon, the moment Our, Our Lady appeared, the rainfall ceased, and the bright sun was able to be looked upon directly without any painful disturbance to the eyes. So they're able to look at this glowing disc um, that is not the sun, clearly. One witness to the miracle, Mary Allen, stated, Suddenly the rain ceased, the clouds separated, and I saw a, larger, a large sun, brighter than the sun, yet I could look at it without hurting my eyes, as if it were the moon, quoted by Fatima. The sun began to dance, whirling violently through the sky, shooting forth streams of light, which colored objects on the ground. What does this sound like a description of? So many times I've heard that people say they see this disc flying that's glowing and lights are coming out and it can hit the ground. And it's always so miraculous they can't look away from it. I'm seeing a parallel here. Whatever these people saw that day is the same supernatural act that people are seeing when it comes to the UFO thing. That's what I'm seeing here, a connection. And so because of this encounter that they're having, they're seeing it as truth, theological truth. They're, they're saying that this is a miracle from Mary herself. That's right. And th this is a, an example of an apparition of Mary that was actually captured on camera. This is just to show that, you know, the idea that you see a spirit and it's kind of like a hologram and, you know, these things can actually be caught on camera. So that's why you see UFOs caught on camera, like we just saw on the news, right? These things can manifest in a way that's caught on camera. Um, oftentimes when you hear of angels in the Bible, they're physical beings, right? They just look like men, or they come as bright beings that people see. A and donkey. they can... Hmm? A donkey. Donkey and uh, the serpent. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought this was interesting that at the Vatican... This past year for uh, Christmas time, their nativity scene included an ancient astronaut. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but it seems like maybe they're in on this too, because uh, very interesting. They have the world's largest observatory called, you know about this, the Vatican. Oh, yeah. So the Vatican has a huge facility and it has one of the biggest telescopes in the world that they use to kind of look up into space. Um, and it's called the Lucifer Telescope. The name of it is Lucifer. Why they chose yeah. to name it that? Well, know. you know, right? Uh, why why choose the name Lucifer? But don't click yet. Okay. Um, I tell you what. This scene is supposed to represent the birth of Christ at the Vatican, and I can see the art. Maybe someone's trying to be artful. Uh, you know, seeing the astronaut there, I, it doesn't really resemble Christ to me. But I have a really interesting question. I can see the little astronaut looking guy, but I know that blue usually represents a deity. Patrick, what's that thing next to the astronaut looking thing? It, I'm guessing it's not Mary. <laughs> I don't think it's Mary either, but uh, of course, I don't know what the artist was trying to present, but based off of the look of it, um, it kind of has, you know, uh, webbed ears, it looks like. It has scales. It's um, and to me, it looks like it would be Dagon, the, uh, uh, you know, the fish, fish god. god. That, the what? The fish god. The and fish um, god. even the miters on the Pope's head. And the, oh, yeah. those are, those come from the same kind of worship. Definitely um, does. Brings a whole new light to Babylon, right? <laughs> Babylon has fallen. So we've looked at kind of what's going on in the Catholic world with this stuff. What about the New Age? Because this is a spiritual belief as well. Star people is a New Age belief. 
Star people, also known as star seeds and sometimes indigo children, is a new age belief and fringe theory introduced by Brad Stegar in the 1976 book Gods of Aquarius. It argues that certain people originated as extraterrestrials and arrived on Earth through birth or as a walk in to an existing human body. It is a variant of the belief in alien human hybrids. So just so you know, new age is not like it used to be. It's not like, oh, only the weird hippies are into it. This is creeping into everything. When you see uh, churches having holy yoga, that's connected to the new age. This is <laughs> you cannot separate the new age belief from yoga. And uh, I'm starting to see so much propaganda for yoga. You can you can look up anything on YouTube. Type in candy bar yoga, mattress yoga, anything you search. There's a commercial of somebody holding hand mudras and om and all this. They're pushing this so hard. There's so many people who are into the New Age belief who aren't even aware that that's what they're into, even Christians. So I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that it explains these star people as walk into an existing human body. So are we trying to say that physical beings that live on another planet can inhabit a human body? I don't know how that's physical. Well, well, it says star people. And so I'm thinking of the word star. What is the star? Go ahead, JJ. Angel. Ah, a star is an angel. Good job, JJ. Angel. And so we have these messengers that come to earth and they do what to humans? They can be a walk in to an existing human body. So uh, those that are extraterrestrial, they come into the human bodies like ghosts. Yeah. And then they take over the body and then they become the host. That's right. This is the belief of uh, oh. many people that these physical beings that live on other planets can actually, you know, they're just so far advanced. That's all it is. It's just advanced technology that they can, you know, speak with telepathy and all these things. But when I see that, it takes me to Luke eleven twenty four. You want to read that, Jared? When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... He walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I return unto my house whence I came out. So we know that unclean spirits can inhabit a man. I don't know of any physical being that can inhabit a person. So I'm starting to draw my conclusions that these are not physical beings that live on another planet that travel millions of light years away just to give us their message, which is, I mean, I've been looking at testimonies of abductees for years and it's always um you guys need to get rid of dogma and you need to get rid of religion and jesus isn't who you really think he is he's an ascended master he's actually an alien himself why would beings from millions of light years come to earth to tell you jesus is not who he is i don't understand why anyone would would think that this is just a being uh coming to visit us well the way i kind of see it as um you know, they're uh, co coming in to totally confuse the masses. Yeah. And But it's a being that is supposed to help us. An enlightened being bringing yeah, enlightened false being. doctrines, right? Yeah, the, the uh, New Age belief is, is a whole belief based on self-exaltation. Um, and, and it's disguised as kind of a, you know, self-help, um, you know. So when, you know, speaking from my own experience, I would meet people who would, claim that they were star people or star childs, indigo mm. children. Um, and yeah, it's just it, Lucifer and the fallen angels wanted to exalt themselves above God. And so it's the same kind of spirit that's inhabiting the people of the new age. Very I think true. it's also just, just giving people a reason to just be pointing all these crazy satellites in the space when the real thing that's going to save them while they're here on this earth is not the knowledge that's outside of this world, yeah. but the knowledge that's right here, and that's the Word of God. And that's that's the thing. People are people think these beings are enlightened and and have more advanced technology and can actually help us. Actually, me and Scotty from Little Light Studios went on the street and asked people, "Do you believe in aliens?" Because we're working on a documentary for this. 99% of the people said, yeah, I believe in them. And we said, if, if they had a message of like a way to help humanity, would you believe it? And they said, yeah, like these people think that they have the answers and they're smarter than us. This is a clip 
You want to play this one now? Uh, we're going to hold on one second. I kind of want to want to beef it up a little bit. Okay. Anyone here ever heard of Roger Moore New? Oh, amen. Right. If you haven't, you are missing out on a blessing. Bro uh, Brother Roger Moore New has a video out on YouTube called a trip into the supernatural i think it is and he also has a beware of angels is oh yeah beware of angels you can um is that on netflix it's on amazon prime amazon prime okay there there we go yeah that's what i meant to say and um he has a wonderful book on prayer roger moore news been um interviewed in the 90s by amazing facts of mm -hmm. doug bachelor uh this brother has a lot of credibility of being into spiritualism and literal worship Demons. Demon worship. Demons. This guy has an amazing testimony. Patrick, go ahead. Yeah, in his book, A Trip into the Supernatural, it's pretty much goes over his whole testimony of how he got into the occult and then how he was brought out of it. Um, and yeah, he, he's a very reliable source when it comes to firsthand experience of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to ask anybody what's the occult about, why not go straight to the source, somebody who's been in there, right? Yeah, and now Brother Roger Mornu, uh, he will recently passed away, but he's a Seventh-day Adventist. Yeah. And he has this amazing testimony. In fact, he talks about uh, being in this temple in Canada, ran by spirits, and he came into this room. And this room had typewriters typing all by themselves. This is, you know, before Xerox machines and stuff like that. And then it's just the craziest thing. Um, there's this video. I forgot what movie is out there, but um, it was crazy. I saw this short little clip of like, it was like a Harry Potter or something kind of movie of this room that had typewriters just typing by themselves and no one oh. typing them. But anyways, hmm. Brother Roger Bournou, uh, he has a little bit of an accent and uh, he's going to be talking about something really interesting because he goes and he talks to a, um, a priest but a priest of a, a satanic elite organization. He yeah. joined a secret society. He never said which branch it was or whatever, but it was a, a secret society where in the basement of this house was this large marble, uh, what do you call it? Like a altar. And he was like, how, he's looking at the stairs and the doorway. And he's like, how did this even get down here? And the guy who owned the place said, well, demons brought it in here. And they had a, a painting of Lucifer, a manifested Satan manifested, and they painted him. But right here, I just want you to listen to some key words because we were just talking about what the New Age believe, and he's going to be. This is this was shot in the early '90s, late '80s, and he's telling you exactly what we're seeing now. He's telling you that in the future, from when he said it, that the New Age is going to play a huge role in what's going to unroll. And um, and he talks about aliens, and I think he even mentions the Sunday law. The priest said that as the times on this planet gets more and more difficult, and calamities of all kinds are striking the planet more and more frequently, demon spirits are going to impress people with, with the, the importance of Sunday sacredness. Roger, when I was a teenager back in the 1970s, I remember a song that came out talking about the age of a So we're going to pause it right there really quick. Um, in this interview done by Roger Marnu, uh, he says something really interesting. He was saying that demons were going to... Did he go into that yet? Yeah, that was like one of the very first things. What did you hear him say? Um, well, uh, if we were to rewind back, but basically he said that we're going to go to the beginning. Um, I don't know if you're able to really catch it, but we're going to pause it and we're going to read the little blue uh, square and we're going to get the exact verbiage that, on it for um, what he heard from the worship master. As the times on this planet gets more and more difficult and calamities of all kinds are striking the planet more and more frequently, demon spirits are going to impress people with, with the, the importance of Sunday sacredness. Okay, so he said that demon spirits are going to impress people with the importance of Sunday observance. So demons are going to be eventually coming to earth to help push the Sunday agenda. Yeah, and 
here in a second, he's going to tell you exactly how they're going to manifest in a way that is palatable to the majority of people. Because I don't you're not going to be able to get atheists to uh, keep Sunday mandatory Sunday observance unless you have some kind of other agenda tied into it, such as climate change or maybe something that, you know, atheists don't believe in the supernatural. But maybe they believe in aliens because, hey, they're just physical beings. We're in a vast universe. And, you know, maybe they're just traveling here. One of the common arguments that I hear from atheists is, uh, well, let me see God or show me a miracle. Mm -hmm. And uh, our belief should not be based on miracles because uh, Satan is an angel of light. He's going to greatly deceive, especially if you're not spending daily time in prayer and in his word. That's right. So let's hear him finish up what he says here. Roger, when I was a teenager back in the 1970s, I remember a song that came out talking about the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've seen the development of the New Age. And I wondered if back when you were involved in spirit worship, if they talked about New Age at all. Oh, yes. It was a big thing that uh, was coming up. One of the uh, major deceptions of the last days. Mm -hmm. And the priest uh, told us, uh, he had, we talked to quite a while. And uh, then he said, uh, could I have a little bit more? You kind of want to do something very fascinating. He says, the grain plain, the master's grain plain, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause, just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So we continued, you know, after we uh, express ourselves, that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said, it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grain plan is, is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because it says spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of five distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. And he went on saying, so saying that uh, uh, they will claim uh, to have out-of-body experiences. Are you familiar with out-of-body experiences? I've read about. Them. In other words, so a persons, uh, there's some persons are supposed to be able to, you know, uh, they believe in their immortal soul. Astral immortal soul projection. Pro yes, right. Goes in two different parts of the world and sees things and come back and then they write all about it. You know? I've heard of that. So, uh, due to the fact that the millions of the earth people believe in having people having an immortal soul. It has to be readily, readily accepted when the spirit will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people of the land. You see. Now, what is a trans medium? It's a channeler today. What What is known today as a channeler? Channeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shirley McLean's experience of getting involved in spiritism and with the uh, inhabitants, supposed the inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies, I taped the whole thing three hours. And you were hearing the fulfillment of exactly. what this high priest had said yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot to unpack there, Brother Mikey, because mm -hmm. he's he says some interesting stuff. And now we don't take Roger Marnu's, uh voice as thus saith the word God. Um, we're just taking another witness and just adding it to the table. And uh, you want to review over a couple of things that he brought out? Well, I think it's interesting. He said that when the, he said the, the grand plan that the master told him, this demonic high priest was saying that there's going to come a time of great calamity. Check. I think we're here, right? 2020 calamities everywhere. And he said that the demons were going to manifest as beings from another galaxy, another, another planet. And he said that it would, it would, uh, people would communicate through channeling, being a medium. They're going to be able to channel these aliens. Again, if you're a being from another world and you're just visiting from millions of light years away, how are you able to read my mind? How am I able to communicate with you through my mind? That's not advanced technology. That's spirits. And this is about deceiving spirits. What he's saying is, really coming to light they're saying you know the military is saying they're here they're not our technology they're not their technology so who are they and in june they're gonna 
basically tell us everything they know about this. And that's a kind of attributing, you know, a power of God, you know, because he is inside of our consciousness. He, you know, leads us down the right path. Mm -hmm. That's attributing a power that he has to, um, you know, foreign aliens or spirits um, that are either fallen or they're created beings if they you know, are beings at all. That's true. So let's move on. So just to show you that people in the New Age movement, they say that they can summon UFOs. So people go out to a field and, and they uh, hold hand mudras and they, they basically pray that they will see a UFO and it happens. They record it on camera. Why are you able to pray and see a visitor from another planet. Uh, this is a person that a, a company called Vice, they do a lot of documentaries. So, so are you seeing that mediums are no longer just for ghosts, but mediums are also for aliens? For so-called aliens, yes. So what it seems to me is that spiritualism is evolving from ghosts to aliens. Yes. I believe that that's what's happening because you know, people used to believe in ghosts. That's kind of, uh, you know, the Neanderthals believe that. But now we believe in aliens. So it's just, it's it's another disguise. It's another, you know, Satan has a tackle box full of deceptions. Oh, if you're not into the occult, what about the new age? Look, it's, you know, light and it's about love. And um, that's what's going on. So here's a guy who is in the new age and he's channeling an alien and this is the message so if we're we have to test the spirits right what are, what are these beings what is their message from what i understand they view us as basically completely insane when they see us worrying about things like death they find it hilarious and when they see us like running around like headless chickens just to create money just to keep ourselves alive and they know it's all a big joke because you can't die anyway and they say, even if we did die, you can choose to come back from the death state. Who was the first alien to Earth that told a human, you will not surely die? Right? It was, no, it wasn't Satan. It was a snake. <laughs> it was an alien snake. So he's saying that these beings, when it comes to the topic of death, they say, oh, death is, a, is not even real. You can die and come back. And you know that's what these beings are saying. Now, he was just talking about his experience, but then we actually go to see him actually channel an alien, and this is what he says. Shivai, 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 follow your excitement, follow your heart to the best of your ability in any given moment without hesitation. Did you guys catch a, a famous slogan in there by Disney? Follow your heart. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Magic Kingdom by Little Light Studios, but in that documentary, it breaks down how nearly every Disney movie, if not 90% 90, 90 of the movies, say break the rules and follow your heart. I, I made a, a whole video showing, and it's not just Disney. There's other cartoons that say it too. And it's always, no, break the rules, follow your heart, follow the way your heart. When the Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked. Now, these beings are saying you can't die and follow your heart. You can be like God and you can follow your own way. Now this might look funny that he's, you know, Shivai, Shivai, but this is just one incident. I've seen this stuff over and over and over where he's people- He's speaking in tongues, right? Well, interesting that you brought up the tongues because in the new age movement, uh, they have something called light language. And if you look up new age light language, you'll hear people speaking just like you hear in the, Pentecostal churches and things. I mean, it's identical. It's just gibberish. And in the comments, you'll see people saying, wow, that was so beautiful. Like that really touched my heart and all these things. And, it's, and it's, you wonder why the church is so deceived when they say, no, it can't be of the devil. It, I, it felt so loving. It felt like God. The new age is feeling this. The new age is speaking just like that. The new age is feeling these things. So he's not the only one. There's tons of these videos, even as far back as the 70s, where people channel an alien all of a sudden they're speaking with a british accent and they're saying things like death is not real christ is not who you think he is he's an ascended master and um and follow your heart and things like this well during the 70s was also during the age of aquarius right or yeah. start the beginning of the age of aquarius which is the age of enlightenment mm -hmm. or light uh, just kind of depends upon the enlightenment that you're going to be receiving 
That's right. So this is very recent. You can see it's a Zoom meeting because this is a COVID type thing. This is entertainment tonight, interviewing a major influencer. Why, do, why are they called influencers, right? Because media does have an influence. Whether people want to admit it or not, these people are paid millions of dollars to wear a product because it influences other people. So does ET stand for extraterrestrial or entertainment <laughs> That's tonight? just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> but listen to what she says. She's been, during the quarantine, she can't make music. She's a musician, Kesha. Uh, so instead, she started her own YouTube channel where she interviews other celebrities. And listen to what she said was her favorite interview. What would you say is like the coolest or biggest thing you learned from these conversations? Um, with Demi Lovato, I loved the conversation we had because she just turned me on to like a whole new, there are a couple books she mentioned and an app she mentioned that I immediately downloaded and I made my family for Christmas. So like, all I want for Christmas is us all to meditate and try to channel extraterrestrials. And they're like, okay. So I'm like trying to get all my friends and family into meditating the aliens to us. <laughs> my new hobby because of Demi Lovato. Something in that. Thank you, Demi, for that. It's fun, and we bullshit about crazy core experiences with Alice Cooper, but then we also talk about, you know, our own spirituality between me and so many different kinds of people. And I, speaking to a wizard, I feel like that's when. When is that next week? Okay, beginning of February. You're going to hear wow. I want to talk to a wizard. Like a if you guys don't know who Demi Lovato is, who she interviewed, um, in 2019, CBN, Christian Broadcast Network, did an article on her. Demi Lovato being baptized in Israel filled God-sized hole in my heart. When I saw this article, I was like, I was rejoicing. I was like, yes, finally someone in Hollywood that's, you know, an influential person. And, and maybe she's going to start using her talents for God. She's been baptized and, and uh, she did a, an Instagram post here where she said, I'm an American singer. I was raised Christian and have Jewish ancestors. When I was offered an amazing opportunity to visit the place I'd read, I'd read about in the Bible growing up, I said, yes, there is something absolutely magical about Israel. I've never felt such a sense of spirituality or connection to God, something I've been missing for a few years now. Spirituality is so important to me to be baptized in the Jordan River, the same place Jesus was baptized. I've never felt more renewed in my life. This trip has been so important to my well-being, my heart and my soul. I'm grateful for the memories made and made and the opportunity to be able to fill the God-sized hole in my heart. Thank you for having me, Israel. Well, that sounds like a really good text. She's given yeah. her life to Christ. That's right. Baptized in the Jordan River. This was just the end of 2019, October 2019. And now we see she's doing an interview with this lady and she's saying, oh, I want all my family to channel aliens because she saw something. She saw a mesmerizing thing that changed her whole mindset. She went to a field with uh, some of the biggest named people who are into this whole alien declassified movement uh, disclosure project and she meditated and she started seeing orange things floating around she said that the thing came right up to her and she had a conversation with it because she was falling for the miracles this is a so what happened to her is she was raised christian but then she became a drug addict and basically was raped and left for dead in a hotel room and when she uh, recovered from that, she promised God something. You'll, she says it right here. I went to church camp one time and there was somebody who spoke in tongues over me and I grew up Christian, so I wasn't familiar with this experience. And I remember them prophesizing over me saying that one day you'll be a hero to tens of thousands of people. And luckily my platform has reached many more through social media and through my work. But um, it was that day that she said, you'll be a hero to thousands of people. And she said it would be through the arts. And I knew in that moment that if I ever were to make it as a singer, I kind of made this pact with God that said, God, if you give me the opportunity to live my dreams, I will pay you back and I will live my life in hopes of helping others. So she made a promise to God that 
if he blessed her with this fame and being a musician that she would use it to glorify God. But I don't see that at all. She's an influencer. She's, she's got the influence of thousands, or she influences thousands of people, but she's getting on these platforms and saying, yes, I want everyone to channel aliens. It's no longer just about, oh, I, I saw a visitor going by. Now it's about channeling. Now this is entered into the world of religion. This is no longer, oh, I saw a visitor. This is inviting those visitors into your body, into your brain. This is spiritualism. Yeah, and well, and and the sad part about that is, is that um, she gives her life to Jesus, and then, due to I don't know what the circumstances, but she be then begins infiltrate or being infiltrated by this false light, these lies um, that's just being fed to her, and then she's regurgitating these lies onto the social media, onto all of her followers, and so it's, this lie is just being reproduced over and over and over again. And how many young Christian people got excited that she was baptized and, hey, she's a Christian now. Oh, we should channel aliens. An influential Christian told me that we can channel aliens. This is something or this is someone and people like hers are people that we should be praying for and not judging. But mm. this is something that we do need to be observant of. Yeah, we need to expose it for what it is and and get the truth out there, because if there, if all people are seeing is this. And the church isn't talking about it. Like I said, you have to be able to weigh the evidence, right? But if there's no evidence on the church side, you're just going to go with this because I see it. It's real. This is, you know, they're going to say the church just doesn't understand. Um, they've been deceived. But ju I just want to play this clip because it comes straight from the horse's mouth and it's more powerful to hear it from her than me. So I'm going to show you exactly what she said was her experience. The frequency of the city was just super amazing and it was super easy to make contact. We had been meditating all week and then it only took us 10 minutes before we looked up and saw, I, like we saw a ship at what looks like a Concord plane, you know, those like black ones that look yeah. like triangles it looked like that, but it had two red lights. And then at one point the ship just separated into two different ships like it can't yeah. explain it but yeah. you're seeing it and you're just like cool so everyone else saw that yeah, yeah. all right so what it, and then you're just kind of, and then there's this surreal moment of like so do we go inside like <gasps> were you so there she's explaining her experience where the ship actually separated that doesn't sound like a physical anything i don't know of anything that can actually split apart I've seen a lot of UFO videos on the internet of, you know, it's just one light and then it separates in a seven or three. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the thing is, is they defy physics because even though they're showing up on radar, they're, they're clocked at, at flying over a thousand miles an hour and making 90 degree turn. Now what's going to happen if you're a passenger in there, you're going to get thrown against the wall. Right. Also, they say people who have been abducted and, and things are saying that, they're told that these visitors are coming from millions of light years away. Now think about that. A million light years is you're traveling at the speed of light and it takes you a million years at the, at the speed of light. Any craft, any physical craft traveling at that speed would just shred apart. Literally space dust would penetrate the ship in the form of radiation. It's, it's not even possible. This is defying physics. But when we were talking about mediums, it made me think of this verse here in 1 Samuel 28, 7. You want to read that? Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. 1 Samuel 28, 7. So the Bible tells us that there's people who can channel, and they're mediums, and something else speaks through them, just like what we're seeing. These people so, are saying that so, aliens so, are speaking through them. Sorry to cut you off. So since Saul reached out to a medium, then it's okay if we do it then, right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't use him as an example. <laughs> Not in this situation. So this is uh, just an example of some ascended masters, what the New Age would... They, they see these beings, and sometimes the form of Mary, sometimes the form of the paintings that we have of Jesus, as well as Buddha and, and all these other um, beings here. Because the New Age is very deceptive. I, I have books on new age because I'm, I'm researching for this project and the whole thing is just scripture 
I mean, you wouldn't believe it. It's just scripture upon scripture, you know, but it's things in there like, well, we were created in the image of God. And if God can speak things into existence, then you can speak things into existence. You're created in the image of God, right? So it's very deceptive. Um, a Christian, I could see how they might read this and be like, oh, it's a Christian book. I mean, you see all the scriptures, right? And there's all, actually, they talk about Christ. The New Age, they're not like atheists who say, we hate, you know, we hate your religion and we don't believe in Jesus. These people believe in Jesus. They believe, oh, yeah, he was a great man. He was actually an ascended master. I want to become like him, just like we want to be like Jesus, right? They want to be like him and, and reach Christ's consciousness because Jesus reached a state of perfection that most of us don't, a state of uh, nirvana where he was able to actually ascend back, you know, when he went back to heaven and was and caught up in a cloud. That was because he reached Christ's consciousness and ascended back to his mothership, potentially. So th this idea that, um, you know, that Jesus is returning, that doesn't, that doesn't, they can believe that. That doesn't go against their belief system. They just have a totally different view about who Jesus is. Yeah, speaking from my own testimony, when I, you know, before I came to the Bible, uh, I would read books by Alice Bailey and Helena Blavatsky, and Alice Bailey was very aware of, you know, Christian ideas um, and of Scripture, and she would, she would invert them. Mm. But at the time, I didn't know they were being inverted. Um, she always talked about God in us, and that, you know, that would make us God. And wow. um, she always talked about Jesus Christ and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, if you're not familiar with the Bible, then it's definitely a, a big snare for uh, people who are going into the new age. That's right. It's a it's a common um, analogy that we use that, you know, p police and stuff, they don't they don't study the counterfeit. You know, they study the real so that right away they can see the counterfeit. That's the same thing with this. If you just, yeah, I'm a Christian. I was raised Christian. I'm picking up these books that are telling me how I can be like Christ and I can uh, reach Christ consciousness. You're not going to know the truth. You're going to fall for the counterfeit. Um, this slide right here is just to describe some of the some of the um, types of aliens that people describe. There's always like these blondes and then there's these grays and then the reptilians. And I think, you know, it, it relates a lot to what we have biblical descriptions of Jesus or of Satan an angel of light, um, frog, and a serpent. Because think about this. Think about if a person came into your church and said, hey, I was hanging around in the garden and I, I saw this beautiful being of, it was like a reptilian and it was speaking to me. It was full of wisdom. It, it actually talked to me and it told me how to have wisdom and how I can be like God. This is exactly what we're talking about. That We would say that, oh, you must have had an encounter with an alien. Well, according to the Bible, it was the original alien, Lucifer, who fell from heaven. He's an alien, came to earth, and he's saying the exact same message that these reptilians are saying. I can, I have, I'm enlightened. I can uh, teach you how to be like gods, right? This is the same thing we're seeing here. And part of earlier you were talking about the ascended masters um in the new age i know it's a big thing um a bunch of them would take pilgrimage to uh tibet and places like that mm, yeah. um to where they would get in, encounter different substances um usually psychedelic in nature and they um that's how you would get in contact with these ascended masters or or spiritual beings and they that's, would give you answers that's a good point because that's another thing i wanted to say is we understand why we shouldn't be um, taking substances that intoxicate your mind, right? Because it's a gateway to the demonic world. That's the reason they call them spirits, you know? And so there are a lot of people who take this drug called DMT. It's a super hallucinogenic drug. And in almost every account of somebody who's done this drug, Joe Rogan being a huge proponent of this, interviews people all the time, every one of them say, I took it, I smoked it or whatever, and I shot out of my body into outer space. And once I was there, I, I saw aliens. And I started talking with the aliens. Or they see God, who's a blue-faced woman. So they're, they're getting the wrong idea of who God is. They're communicating with aliens while on hallucinogenics. So you can contact aliens through drugs. You can contact aliens through false worship, like uh, the New Age movement. You can summon these things. I think that this is not physical. I think that's where this is leading, right? 
that they they make 90 degree turns at a thousand miles an hour. They divide on radar. This is not physical. Do you want to read this? Sure. So, where, where did this come from? So, uh, back in the 1940s, um, there was he was dead by about 1947. But there was a big occultist named Aleister Crowley, and uh, he was a big proponent of ushering in the New Age movement, um, and he called it the New Age of Horus, and he believed himself to be the Messiah of that New Age. And so he um, got together with um, a man called L. Ron Hubbard, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. He was the founder of Scientology, and then Jack Parsons, which is the founder of Jet Propulsion's laboratory. And uh, they went out into the desert of Nevada, um, coincidentally where Area 51 is now located. Mm -hmm. um, was Area 51 there then? No, it was constructed, I think, in the late 60s or something. Um, so this is well beforehand. And this is a quote from Kenneth Grant, who's part of the OTO, which is the secret society that Alistair Crowley created. Um, so he's, he's talking about the ritual that they conducted out there. And so the Babylon working began in 1945 through 1946, a few months before Crowley's death in 1947. And just prior to the wave of unexplained aerial phenomena, now recalled as the Great Flying Saucer Flap, Parsons, op Jack Parsons, opened a door and something flew in. A gateway for the Great Old Ones, another way of saying Ascended Masters, um, has already been established and opened by members of the OTO who are in report with this entity. And uh, he was alluding to an entity that Alistair Crowley had gotten in contact with prior um, and there's pictures about that later on, and we'll discuss that. But um. So this is a pretty thick tinfoil hat right here. So yeah. what you're saying to me by this quote is that someone that leads satanic worship did a ritual before Area 51, in the Area 51 area, did a satanic ritual, and then afterwards, pretty quickly, uh, there were some sightings in Area 51 was resurrected. Yeah. Uh, not even a year later in 1947 is when the Roswell crash happened. Yeah. Um, and so many occultists, such as Kenneth Grant here um, and Marjorie Cameron, a bunch of them, believe that the different UFO phenomena that began to happen during that time was due to the success of this ritual. Um, and I have some more quotes in here we do. So but, what, uh, I, what I think is interesting is these occultists went out to this certain location and were seeing the, these flying objects. And then now we have Area 51 there. Why did the military or whoever is in charge of Area 51 choose that location to study this thing? Where you know, I think there's a connection there. Should I read this one too? Yeah. Go ahead. So this kind of goes over the whole goal of these these rituals that they perform. So the ultimate goal of these operations. Um, What's this quote from? Uh, this is from uh, a man called Urban Hugh. Um, and uh, he, he was very familiar with Crowleyanism and um, that kind of mysticism and satan Satanism. So, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure he was a professor somewhere. But the ultimate goal of these operations carried out during February and, February and March of 1946 was to give birth to the magical being or moon child described in Crowley's works. Um, so then it goes on and says, uh, the, the intention of these rituals were to open a doorway through which the goddess Babylon herself might appear in human form. So Crowley himself also performed the ritual and uh, they wanted to invoke and manifest the Scarlet Woman of, of Revelation in order to usher in the new age. So they're trying to bring in a scarlet woman into the new age. And who's who's the scarlet woman? We all know who the scarlet woman is, but they have their own definition of exactly who the scarlet woman is. But it, it appears to be a great friend of theirs on top of that. Yeah. Following the ritual, um, L. Ron Hubbard and Parsons and many others believed it to be a success. And Parsons even talked about a few weeks after he met the scarlet woman. Um, just by chance, and he ended up marrying her. Um, and he believed he believed her to be like a actual human being, you know, but with very powerful and very spiritual. Um, you know. Here's another slide that you had. So this is another quote, kind of going over the 
uh, aim of the ritual. So the aim of Parsons' Babylon working was first to identify a female partner who would serve as his partner in different esoteric rituals that they would perform in order to invoke this, uh, this scarlet woman. And so the partner would, become, would then become the vessel, vessel for the magical child or moon child, a supernatural offspring that would be the embodiment of ultimate power. According to Parsons' account of March 2nd through the 3rd, 1946, Aaron Hubbard channeled the voice of Babylon, speaking as the beautiful but terrible lady. So when I see that word moon child, it makes me think of star child that we saw was a being that can inhabit an already existing human, right? So again, spiritualism. This is a picture of Aleister Crowley. And uh, this guy on the right here, he's reading the book. Uh, he works for Vice. And he, what you see in this picture is a demon that Aleister Crowley saw. He drew this himself. This is the demon he saw. What does this look like, right? It looks like something from Star Trek. So this quote says, when we, okay, so the guy from Vice went to Brazil to try and have this same experience that Aleister Crowley had. He wanted to manifest this demon, so he went over there and did a bunch of rituals, but it says when we last left off our magical story with Brian Butler, he talked about how his demon worship experience in Brazil culminated in a lamb visitation. This being is called lamb, L-A-M. Who's the lamb? Jesus Christ is the lamb. It says that lamb is the Tibetan word for the way. So this being is calling himself the way and the, and the word is the lamb. Uh, in the article, Brian Butler, the one who had the experience, says it's always been a bit of a mystery what this was to Crowley or what the creature was at all. You can tell by looking at it that it looks like the gray aliens, although it precedes that. So what it is. So what is it? A self-portrait of Crowley on an astral plane? Was it an entity that he encountered? Was it uh, some name here that's probably from the New Age? So he went purposely to do a ritual to invoke this being that looks just like what people describe as an alien. But this is a demon, according to Aleister Crowley himself. So just to recap things, and then we're going to go into some scriptures and spirit of prophecy. But these things have been seen since the beginning, right? As long as we can go back, we've seen etchings, we've seen carvings of uh, what they call, you know, ancient alien theory and, and these beings. But the military has also created these flying things. So are we seeing a, you know, a top secret a craft? But they defy physics as well. The Catholics have seen it in the, in the thousands. The New Age say that they can channel them and can summon them. Uh, the occultists like Aleister Crowley said that he saw one. And their message is always the same, right? Their message is always... You are like God. You can be God. You can evolve into God. Christ isn't who you think he is. We're coming millions of light years away just to tell you, stop being a Christian. And they are deceiving spirits in the last days. Want to read this? First Timothy chapter four, verse one and two. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. According to what we've seen, is it logical to say that these are not beings from another planet that are just visiting? Is it logical to say that when they inhabit your body, people who have been abducted say that these beings can walk through walls, that when they get abducted, they go right through the ceiling or right through the window. This is not physical. I've heard testimonies of people who say that they came out of the experience by praying in the name of Jesus or by singing a hymnal. And the people who saw that went to these alien conventions and said, have you ever heard of this? Have you ever heard of somebody coming out of a, an alien abduction experience by saying the name of Jesus? And they said, yeah. And they said, well, why aren't you talking about that at these conventions? And they said, well, we just don't know what to do with it. Because these are people who are not Christian. They don't want to believe in Christianity. They want to believe in this idea that, no, we're being visited by visitors. But just like Demi Lovato had this experience, she's a Christian, right? She got baptized on the Jordan River, and she's professing to be a Christian. And now she has departed from the faith. 
Why? She's giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. This is exactly what happened to Demi Lovato. This is exactly, if it can happen to her, it can happen to any of us. We're not, you know, Satan is a very deceitful, crafty, sly being, enough that he can deceive a third of the angels. Eve, who was perfect, right? And when all these people who say, yeah, I believe in aliens, and yeah, I believe that if they had a message for us, I, it would be a good thing. What is going to happen when they physically, with their eyes, see a manifestation like this? They're going to depart from the faith. And what's interesting about this verse at the very beginning, you have highlighted, when is this supposed to happen? In the what? Latter times. Satan's already been deceiving the whole world, but now it's being concentrated to the extremes because he's been building, building, building. So now the great deception is finally ripe. Yeah, to the point where the news is saying, hey, the military says they're real and they're here and we're going to tell you everything we know about them. Of course, it's going to be their version of the story. It's not going to be this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So these wicked beings are where? In the heavenly places, right? That's where these people are seeing these strange craft that can divide and go on and off radar and all these things. They're seeing the deceiving spirits that are the wickedness in heavenly places. Mark chapter 13, verse 22 and 23. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed. See, I have told you all things beforehand. That's exactly the purpose of this presentation. Jesus said, do not be deceived. How do we not be deceived? We go to his word. His word says that false Christ and false prophets, if these beings are coming to earth and, and giving you some kind of gospel, like you can be God yourself and you can uh, you know, ascend, be an ascended master, that's a false prophet. That's a false type of Christ because the new age believe in this Christ, but it's a false Christ. And these false prophets are showing signs and wonders to deceive like Demi Lovato and many others who are falling for this deception. But Christ doesn't want us to be deceived. He says, I've told you all things beforehand. His word tells us what to watch out for. I, I think some of this is really good. And um, sites of a supernatural character. This is Ellen White's writings here. Oh, these are some good ones. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, that's today, and fearful sights and great sh uh, signs shall there be in heaven. Uh, that's Luke 21, 11, manuscript 210. So I'm thinking about where the verse says that men's heart will feel, fail them for fear. What is it going to take for a man to have a heart attack by something he saw, uh, a fearful sight in the heavens? <laughs> I don't think we're just talking about he saw a shooting star or something, right? He probably saw something that's going to shake his faith, something that's just so supernatural that it's having <laughs> that he's going to die from the fear, right? What's the next one say? Uh, testimonies to ministers and gospel workers, 117 and 118, or manuscript 210. As we near the close of time, there will be greater and still greater external parade of heathen power. Heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. And this, help me out with that word, delineation. Delineation. Amen. Say that one more time. Delineation. Let me give you five bucks after Sabbath. <laughs> Has already begun to fulfill. Are you guys seeing this one right here? Uh, heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting that she says signal power because, yeah. you know, people are channeling them. Yeah. It's like a signal. Yeah. Well, and also with our telescopes, or not telescopes, but, uh, you know, everything else out there where, where satellites were trying to send out a signal to be able to bounce off a signal back. Yeah. 
are we going to trust these signals that start to come in? Or are we going to uh, trust in the basic instructions before leaving Earth? That's right. I mean, I, I just think we can't argue with this. <laughs> well, heathen deities are going to manifest. I mean, I, I looked up, I typed like uh, pagan flying chariot, and I saw these gods that, that these people believed in that are just flying around in, in you know, vehicles. So the same thing, she said that they're going to manifest and they're going to show themselves to cities. Well, not only that, but it reminds me of, uh, go back just one more quick one, bro. Um, as an Adventist, we've studied into the great deception of Satan in the end times coming as a false Christ in the heavens. And that he's going to try and uh, portray Christ coming down. And when it talks about uh, deceiving them and coming down to the cities... You know, it just makes me think of like other beings that might come down and prepare the way for Satan so that eventually when his time comes to reign, uh, that power is already developed and already going. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, the Pope went on record to say that he would baptize an alien. Um, so you can Google again. that one. <laughs> yeah, I saw that yeah. one. Yeah. He, he literally said that he would baptize an alien. Yeah. So this is in Sights of a Supernatural Character, July 21, or The Great Controversy, actually. Page 20, or 624. Fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens in token of the power of miracle-working demons. Miracle-working demons. At Fatima, these people saw a manifestation and people were actually being healed. They were like hanging up crutches of people that were, were walking because of this manifestation of mary was it mary it was not mary we know it was not it says the spirits of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world to fasten them in deception to urge them on to unite with satan in the last struggle against the government of heaven so these beings are going to work with the militaries of the world the governments to bring them together to fight against christ Evangelism, page 622. A power from beneath is working to bring about the last great scenes in the drama. Satan, uh, excuse me, Satan coming as Christ and working with all deceivable of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves together in secret societies. Those who are yielding to the passion for confederation or unity, false unity, are working out of the plans of the enemy. The cause will be followed by the effect. So what she's saying is that secret societies who rule the world are working together to bring about this satanic false Christ. But a lot of people think of Christ as being an alien, an ascended master, right? Um, who, you know, the New Age movement, they believe in Christ. They just believe in a different Christ than we do. And you know, it says that even if it, if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. I think that we're the elect. We have a different understanding and more uh, biblical truth that 90% of the Christians don't have today. What if they see Jesus returning in a spaceship? Would that just change your entire mindset of what's true? Oh, this is very interesting. Um, I never had heard of this book, Darkness Before Dawn. Ellen White wrote it, but look at this. But the familiar spirits, as these visitants from other worlds were called, are declared by the Bible to be the spirits of devils. So she's talking about spiritualism and how it's going to change and how it's going to be the familiar spirits are actually visitants from other worlds. Familiar spirits. Uh, but spiritualism, which numbers its con converts by hundreds of thousands, yea, by millions, which has made its way into scientific circles, which has invaded churches and has found favor in legislative bodies, politics, the government, which has invaded churches. And has found favor in legislative bodies and even the courts of the kings. This mammoth deception is but a revival in a new disguise of the witchcraft condemned and prohibited of old. Where's this quote from, brother? This is the book called Darkness Before Dawn. 
So she's talking about that this new form of spiritualism, which are visitants of other worlds, is invading, for one, it's deceiving millions, it's converting hundreds of thousands and millions, and it's making its way into the scientific circles, it's making its way into the churches, and into the legislative body. I mean, we're looking at a 5,000 page document that says, we're gonna tell you everything about UFOs. Has that entered into the legislation? Yes. I still don't know why it's part of the whole COVID thing, but we'll go with it. They said that there is uh, double the sightings since COVID. Oh. This one I just think is in your face. I mean, this is uh, Satan bringing about this prophecy in a physical form. It says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. These look like frogs came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. These frog like demons that perform miracles are going to the kings of the earth. No, this isn't a sci fi movie. This is straight out of Revelation, out of the spirit of prophecy. We are living it. We are seeing it. The military says that we're going to tell you everything we know, and they're here, and they're not ours, and they're not theirs. So where are they from? 2021 is about to get weird, guys. Now, we're not saying that those three unclean spirits are aliens or anything else deceptive like that. Spirit of prophecy goes more into those three unclean spirits. But this is end-time deception that we're living in right now. That's right. And um, as this becomes a more relevant topic among your peers and your work area, your schools and such, uh, we want you to be educated, to be able to say, you know, what does the Bible have to say about this? Mm -hmm. You know, should we be looking to the skies for answers or should we looking, be looking to the word of God? Amen. So I just hope that this was something to think about. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what, what the... Government's going to release in June, but I think we need to be watchful. We need to have an answer. Be ready always to give an answer for what we believe. And in my findings, I've seen that these are not physical beings at all. These are a spiritual deception that are going to deceive millions. And we need to be ready. And we need to have understanding, just like we have understanding about the rapture, the state of the dead, and all these other things. This is something else that we should be looking at. Especially because if it's so closely connected to spiritualism, the spirit of prophecy has warned us so much about spiritualism. And Satan, all he has done is, is he has evolved his theology of spiritualism from uh, the ghosts to aliens. Because if you think about it, spiritualism today, almost every religion accepts some form of spiritualism, meaning you can talk to the dead. But like you were saying, to make that connection with the atheists, now you're able to deceive on a higher plane. Yeah, you're reaching a broader audience. Yeah, and uh, Jesus is coming back soon. He wants us to stay Amen. focused on the cross. Um, is there anything else, Brother Patrick or Mikey, that you guys might have for the evening before we close it up and have the Q&A? Okay. All right. <laughs> Any questions? Anything if somebody wants to add to this? Yes, yes. Q&A. Um, here, 